Howdy, howdy. This is Clara Lawrence. So I thought I would work on something a little bit different. i um, doing a series of these guys. Um, I like playing with resin in ways of texture. And let me explain what I mean by that. Um, I'm using paint here in the background of one of my Lazy Susans. And it's acrylic paint. And I'm just applying some colors that I know will work together well and i'm not worried about the brush strokes i'm just putting it on there and kind of loosely blending it in but not working at it in such a fashion that it needs to have a nice smooth transition so what that leaves me with is the texture of the brush strokes in within the acrylic paint as well as some slight shifts in color and just an overall a nice little background in which to put resin on top of it also seals the wood up really nicely too, but it definitely leaves a nice little texture to it. So if you're playing with resin on top, and let's say you're using clears or colors that are transparent, you can see that acrylic paint through the background. Some cases it's a very subtle thing, sometimes it's not so much, but it's just enough that it really plays with the depth of the resin quite a bit. And if you're already working with a layer of resin that you get uh, that rich depth in it, in it, where it does some effects where you can see it going through the layers and such, adding that extra stuff with uh, you know, the paint in the background really makes it even even deeper as far as the uh, the effect. So as you can see here, I'm just loosely playing with these colors until I get a combination that I'm really, really happy with. Now the paints I'm using are some paints I've had for a long time there. Yeah, I had, like I said, a long time. Some of them have some particles in them. I need to clean it out a little bit. But the brand is, a, or I guess the product line is Lemire, and it's by Jacquard. And they're acrylic paints. They kind of got a... Um, not really a heavy body to it. It's kind of a uh, a little bit, not quite flow, but it's like a nice in-between. I've used them many times in painting uh, either backgrounds or like wood projects and such like this. Um, I also used them in the beginning when I was messing around with resin. And I would use them to color my resin up. And that was before um, all, all these pigments and paste came out to color resin with. So they're the glorious colors. Most of them are pearlescent. They've got a couple of interference colors and such. So as you can see here, I'm working on just kind of nice little warm tones, almost like a painterly background like you would see on the background of portraits and such like that. So think of it that way. All right, so you saw how the first time I was just kind of almost priming the board, putting a little bit of paint all over it, and then just slowly building up my colors. It's almost like an underpainting, and then you add more colors onto it. Acrylic paint's kind of a funny little paint where it has kind of a short working time. Not super fast, but definitely a lot shorter than acrylic uh, um, oil paints. So you've got some time in there in which you can blend really well with it, or Wait a little bit, it'll dry, and you can kind of create a uh, dry brush on there. So I've got a little bit of both in here. All right, so let me bring you in for a close-up so you can see what I'm talking about as far as textures and such. And I'm going to clean up that edge a little bit there uh, before it gets too long. And you just clean up with a wet rag with just uh, water. Want to hit it a little bit with some highlight spots just to kind of brighten up that area a little bit because it kind of had a nice glow to it and I just wanted it to be a little bit more intense that's why I hit it with some highlights okay so this guy is all nice and dry and it's ready for a layer of resin so we're gonna get started with that and what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna play with a second layer to add a little bit of texture to it that is contrasty to the texture that's on the bottom as far as painting wise. So, so first, I'm gonna put on the clear.
So I'm going to do something fairly simple, meaning on my second coat, uh, I want to accent the other colors, but I don't want to take away from them. So I'm a, I've got a range of colors that I've already got pre-mixed up. Um, I've got some white, I've got some golds, I've got some interface gold. Um, I've got a couple of chameleons, I've even got purples and things like that. So just to, I'm going to put a little bit more resin on there. It's funny, I get the question asked a whole bunch. It's like, how much resin did you use? It's like, I mix up such a big container full of it. It's like, I don't even know. Kind of go on the uh, how it's going to flow thing. Let's see if I can nudge it over. I wanted to go edge to edge, but my edge here is so shallow that I have to be careful because I can go over easily. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Just a little part. Yes, okay. So I did a piece recently that I really, really liked and I'm kind of duplicating it, but with some different colors and just to play with it because I really liked how it looked. Sometimes it's when you uh, create something and then you work on how to duplicate it so that way you can use that technique anytime you want to and that's kind of what I'm going on kind of what I'm doing today so I've done some paintings before where I've done resin on top of them and I really like the way they look okay I'm trying to get the resin to kind of settle back out because it was really really heavy there and <laughs> heavy in the wrong spots. Let's see if I can get it to, I'm gonna go see if I can tilt it this way and then move it around from the bottom towards that spot. Ah. See with it being shallow, it wants to come up over the lip there. Come on, okay. Let it settle again. Maybe I'll get a stick here and just very so carefully nudge it over. And remember, resin self-leveling. So that will happen naturally. What I didn't do, and I should have done, these little turntables aren't exactly level when it comes to the mechanism down on the bottom of them, but I want to make sure my resin pour is level. So I need to rise it up. All right, I think that it works there. Put that with the heat, get rid of some air bubbles. So I've got some, hmm, I've got some purple, kind of similar to this color, and I've got a plum similar to this color. I don't know if I want to take away from that. So maybe what I'll do is I'll add a thin line of it. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to do it just basically a swirl pattern for right now. I just, okay. I just pinch it and just ever so slightly. Alright, that's done. And then I've got got a chameleon here that's kind of got a red gold shift to it. So that should be kind of fun. 
Again, another thin line. Just got to keep doing it until it stops dripping. All right. And then this is a gold chameleon. Very pretty, kind of pearlescent. So it's like a very pastel y gold. The reason why I keep it moving is that I could uh, drip some of it down and the drip you don't know if it's going to be a little a droplet or if it's going to be a line so I'd rather it move in the same flow than just leaving a, a drop all right How you get rid of that is you just move it down in the same direction. That gets rid of that squiggle. And I need to pick that for my finger. So I'm just opening them up a little bit. We're kind of fanning it out just a little bit. Not a lot. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move it. I'm going to try and see if I can still move it in a circular kind of pattern. See if I can get this white to touch. I'll have to clean that up. Now I gotta be mindful of my thumb. That's why I was talking about it going over. All right, let me see if I can level this off a little bit. All right, I'm gonna let this sit for a little bit so that way the resin can kind of level back out and get off this rim a bit. Another way to kind of minimize that some is I can even put a little, barely a little bit of resin all the way around the rim and it'll disappear from sight as far as, you know, a nice distraction. just a little bit over here and go in this direction sometimes it's just a matter of going with your gut now that looks really pretty come on <laughs> it does not want to go back Okay, All right, let me bring you in for a close up. Okay, I fibbed. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do here is, I'm gonna kinda do what I was talking about here. I was just picking up ever so gently a little bit of resin and just put it around the edge. And it's kinda like varnishing the wood. But this way I can get just barely a little bit 
there and it's shiny just like the center is. Trying to pick up some clear. Hmm. Okay. I guess I got a big old tub of clear. I can use it. Let me pour it into a cup. It might make it easier for me. In that area that I was dabbing my finger in, it looked like it was a spot that might have some color. So I didn't want to start putting color on the side. Because then you got to worry about matching it. So I've just got a little bit of resin in my cup here. And I'm just dabbing my finger ever so gently. I'm using my other hand to kind of steady myself. And since this is an item that might be used for food, um, might not be, might just be used in the office, who knows? Um, I always make sure I put a clear coat on there. So that clear coat's gonna blend right into this with no trouble. As you could say I'm kind of doing a, what I'm referring to as a skin coat. Very, very thin. Got both sides met. We are done with that part. Scrape off my little finger. All right, let me bring you in for a close-up now. It's official. All right, overall view. Now we're gonna go down. All right, zooming in. Okay, see how you can see the texture of the paint there? And then you have resin texture on top of that. And with that white and the colors, and see how it looks like the white is really going in deep, like it's a real thick layer of resin. Those are the kind of fun stuff that is showing up a little bit more. I mean, even that looks like a ribbon flowing in there. Wasn't going for trying to create cells at all. So some might pop up anyway, but what I was going for is to play with some, some depth, depth and contrast. And I like how the two work together. I mean, that's just really cool. And just some simple colors on top. I could have gotten away with just white and a gold without any trouble whatsoever. And seeing here, even with me touching it to the edge there, it just trailed it off ever so lightly. Yeah. All right. Later, y'all.
All right, y'all know what to do. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. Definitely hit the bell to get notified next time I put a video up. And check my links in the description below for any supplies you might be interested in. All my colors, I get them from Artist Till Death. And their link is down there too. And a code for, I think, an additional 5% off. So, and also links for my Etsy store because it is getting into the holidays. There we go.